Hello, this is Roman Shaw with Far From Standard Tutoring, and today we'll be looking at a graph antiderivatives. So, we are given the graph of f prime of x, and we want to graph f of x. But wait, isn't f of 10 equal to 10? Why is on the graph f of 10 equal to negative 4? That's a good question, John. So as you can see, f of 10 equals 10. So what you were thinking of should be on this graph, 10, 10. It's really easy to confuse f prime of 10 versus f of 10, so just know that those, just draw those two graphs out separately, and then you'll avoid that confusion. So here at FFS, we're going to look at three basic things to keep in mind when we're doing this. The first is that f, if f prime is positive, then f is increasing. Now, of course, if f prime is negative, then f is decreasing. So let's look at that first. We know that f is going to be increasing over here, decreasing all the way over here until 25, increasing all the way in over here until 45, and then decreasing here until 50, just because it's positive or negative. f prime is positive or negative then. Now, here is where uh, this gets a little tricky. Now we can actually be very, very precise when we're drawing the, the graph, because the area under this graph, uh, f prime, is actually what f changes by. So, Let's take a look at how this will work out. First of all, f of 10 equals 10. Let's look at this area over here. We know that f prime is negative between 0 and 10, so we know that this is going to decrease. So here it's probably at 0, it's probably some high number up there, and it's going to decrease down to 10. But how much will it actually decrease by? Well, that will actually equal the area over here. Now this is a triangle. So using 1 half base times height, we get 1 half times 4 times 10, which is 40 divided by 2, 20 is the point. So 20 is what it will go down by. So what number do you have to be at to go down by 20 and reach 10? Well, 30. So at 0, f has to be 30, and it will decrease down over here. What about here? Well, we're actually not given this. So here's where a lot of exams might try to trick you. But what you have to realize is just uh, these marks. Each mark is 5 units apart, so this actually has to be negative 5. So we know that f prime is positive between negative 5 and 0, so this guy is going to be increasing up to 30 from negative 5. It will be increasing. We don't know what number it is, where it is. It's going to increase up to 30. How much does it increase by? Let's look at the area. 5 times 2 divided by 2, so that's 5. So that will go, it'll go up by 5 to 30. So what point does it have to be over here at? Well, 25. That's how you can go up by 5, 30. Now, let's look at the graph between 10 and 25. Well, between 10 and 25, it is negative. F prime is negative, so this guy is going to decrease. So over here, between 10 and 25, it's going to decrease. But we don't know what it's going to decrease down to. How much is it going to decrease by? So the area over here is 15 times 4, 60, divided by 2, which is 30. So it will go down by 30 units. So if it's at 10, going down by 30 units will make it down to negative 20. So at 25, this graph will be at negative 20. And then of course, it, the area over here between 25 and 40 is also 30. So between 25 and 45, the graph will actually also increase by 30, so it will actually equal this, f of 10. So now looking at the graph between 25 and 40, we know that it goes up also by 15 units, uh, by uh, 30 units because we have 15 times 4, 60, divided by 2. So it will go up by 30 units from negative 20 back up to 10. Now finally, uh, between 40 and 45, we see that the area over here, it's, we know that f is increasing because f prime is positive. But how much will it increase by? Well, 5 times 4 divided by 2, which is 10. So it will go up by 10 units, up from uh, 10 to 20. And then it will do the exact same thing between 45 and 50, because this area also happens to be, as you can see, 5 times 4 uh, divided by 2 which is 10. So it'll go down by 10 again over here. So this is what the graph looks like. Now to actually fill it in, let's just keep one last guiding principle in mind, that whenever f prime is increasing, then f is concave up. 
And of course, again, when f prime is decreasing, then f is concave down. So keeping that in mind, f prime is decreasing between negative 5 and 10. Uh, so it's actually going to be, f is going to be concave down, meaning it's going to look like a sad face between negative 5 and 10. So it's going to look like this. And now it's increasing between 10 and 40. So it's going to look like a smiley face. So it's going to look a little something like this. Notice that we have to make it pass through all the points that we've drawn. And finally, it's decreasing, so it's going to look like a sad face again. So this is what the graph of f will look like based off of f prime of x. Now, notice that it's different from graphing the derivatives graph based on the original function, because here there's ambiguity. What we mean by that is, if you're given the graph that g prime of x is 2x, then we know that g could look anything like one of these. It could be x squared plus 2, x squared, or x squared minus 2, because all of these have the same derivative, 2x. So we, we sort of need to be given a point so that we can actually, you know, some point, maybe an initial point, maybe not in this case, uh, so that we know which one of the infinitely many graphs g is. And so that's why this was actually necessary. And if you don't have anything like this, n no initial value, then you can't unambiguously find the graph of f based on f prime. Well, I hope this video made sense to you, and remember, calculus is fun.